Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with the Lodric vs. Haydn campaign. This is War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition. We are playing Scenario 1. This is the Grand Campaign. This is the 24th February 1942 Turn 79 Combat Replay and Intel Analysis. So this turn is going to be a big one for me. Um, I am anticipating a major naval engagement at Port Blair. I think he's trying to invade there, and I've set something down there to try to intercept it. Uh, I also have some aircraft heading into China to try to disrupt him at Changsha, so I'm hoping for maybe a little cap trap action there. Elsewhere, we've got Xi'an, we've got the ground battle at Changsha, we've got Java, Bandung, we have carriers in the South Pacific near Numea. We've got all kinds of stuff going on this turn, so let's watch and find out what happened. Okay, here we go, February 24th, 1942. I'm hoping for a really good turn today. I want something good to happen, some action. Okay, Burias, he captures that base, or... Yeah, he grabs that in the Philippines. A couple ships sighted around here. Ooh! Did you hear that? That's a mine strike. I think I know where that's at. Listen to that. Something just... That was Japanese. Whatever it was, it was Japanese and they hit a mine. I bet you it's at Port Blair. Ooh, what's this? Oh, oh! Oh, dang! Yes! Look at that thing! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! All right. Come on, some more. Let's get some more. Yes! Dutch sub getting it done, man. That's a big AP. Oh, man, the K-11 dishing out some punishment north of Torres Island on the, uh, I call this the Tulagi Luganville Gap. So, AP Katori Maru takes three torpedoes on fire heavy damage. I know it's about to sink. Let's listen for it. Look, four torpedoes, three hits. This guy was on it. Let's listen in. There it is. We got it. Oh, there it is. There he is. He's coming in at, at Port Blair. Okay, so... Just like our SIGINT predicted, the Yokosuka 2nd SNLF is landing at Port Blair. Okay, so that's where they hit that mine. Oh boy, I wonder if he knows what's coming. I don't think he knows what's coming. He about to find out. Oh, come on. Come on, I can't wait. Okay, they encounter a minefield, and then what? It's weird, I've never seen this before. Now what happens? Whoa, whoa! Yes, finally! Silversides! Man, they've been trying all week, man. They've been shooting at stuff. All we can just get nothing but duds. And finally, we get a Mark 14 to connect. Nice job, Silversides. All right. North of Hokkaido. Okay, so it looks like we got a little a little task force of AKLs. Probably running between Sakhalin and Hokkaido. Uh, one torpedo, a Mark 14 on the Atuta Maru. I'm sure that will eventually sink if it doesn't right now. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. So I-19, Japanese sub, is in the middle of nowhere and just found one of our task uh, forces out here. Uh, fortunately missed. But that's a little unnerving that he's out here. This is right smack in the middle of our supply lane, so we may have to start diverting further south at this point. Okay, so two torpedoes launch at the Mugford and misses, but uh, dangerous to have him here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. Here it is, guys. This is what we were waiting for. Task Force Royal Sovereign has showed up at Port Blair in the middle of them unloading troops. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be good. Tell you what. I'm not going to talk for a minute. I'm just going to sit back and watch this. Enjoy the ride.
one. Obliterated by a direct hit from a 15 inch shell. Gah. Guess I'm just loving this. I'm just in awe watching these guys rip them up. I wish you could see my face right now. I'm just smiling. Yeah. All right. I think we get the picture, guys. They're going to offer no meaningful resistance, so let's go ahead and, uh, See how see how this ends. I don't know. We'll see how this ends. Oh dang. Oh man. Oh man, what a blowout. Look at this. Daytime surface combat. Look at the losses. Two sub chasers, two patrol boats. 10, at least 10 AKLs. No damage to our ships. Royal Sovereign reigned supreme over the Bay of Bengal today. Took no damage. Look at this. Look at it all. Combat ends with the last Japanese ship sunk. We got them, boys. Oh, mm. all right. So at this point, what I'm concerned about is an air attack at Port Blair because we are well within the range of his twin engine bombers now. So I don't really know, you know, what's going to happen with this. So let's we have to see what, if we can get out of there alive or not. Okay, got some Nels coming in from Serbia, attacking these guys that were pushed out of Valley Poppin. Minor casualties, severe storms helping in the hex. Okay, pretty decent sized raid on Sion. Uh, pretty heavy casualties there. We do have a lot of troops in the hex, and the weather's pretty good. Okay, another big raid on. Sion Siong Tan. He's it's interesting he's not going after Cheng Sha. I don't really understand that. Maybe he's trying to stop reinforcements coming in, but like I I don't know. I think this is a mistake. So we damage eleven uh, eleven Sallies. He takes a little chunk out of our troop, but nothing nothing crazy. Okay, another attack on on Cheng Sha. I don't really understand it. Okay, Sion I get. Yeah, it's weird. He's sending everything at Sion Siang Tong and not Chang Sha. Okay, another red on Sion.
Okay, AM phase is done. So, so far, oh, something else just sank. It's probably the, the ship that the Silver Sides hit. Okay, we've got a Japanese sub off of Sydney. So this is the PM phase. Now we gotta see if the guys at Port Blair are gonna get out or not. Alright, so it looks like I got my buffaloes here doing some strafing at Terracan. We don't really accomplish anything with that. It's kind of a waste. Yep, and these guys are coming in to drop some rocks. Yeah, look at that. Worthless. 15 kilogram bombs. Just throw rocks over. Okay, B-17's coming in to soften these guys up. Ooh. And the flak deals a heavy uh, punishment here. That's... Yikes. Almost not worth sending him like that. Okay, he obviously has a lot of flak in that hex. So going back there is not, not a good idea. Those B-17s have been a waste, honestly. I, they've been very ineffective in China. Wow, okay. So that was the PM phase, so it looks like Port Blair is going to get out of there scot-free. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, now he's landing on Panay. And Butuan. Oh, dang. He's coming in behind us now. Yikes. Alright, so we should be going into the ground phase at this point. Hopefully, we have a decent... Oh, man. Uh, this could be it. Um, and Ban Dung has not been doing well against these attacks, so let's go ahead and see what what comes of this. Uh, not looking good. It's not looking good. Yep. Yep, that's bad. Oh, yep, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's a wipeout. That is a total wipeout. Look at that. Complete and utter annihilation on Java. We have fully capitulated on Java. Completely wiped out. Man, my army loss points are going to go through the roof now. Dang it. I thought I could have done better on Java than that. We just really got blown out there. So that's it. Um, Lodric now owns all of Java. We have nothing left on there to to put up any resistance whatsoever. Um, all I got to say is well done. Uh, I think Lodric did an outstanding job executing the Java invasion. Really. I wish all of his could have gone this way for him. Because uh, that's it. Okay, Royal Trash Army in Malaya. Uh, at this time, they do a little better. They're starting to really start to eat into our, our troops here. So they may be getting the upper hand, finally. Okay, that's it. So, um, happy about it to a point. Oh, Changsha grabbed the fortification level. That's good. Good for me. Happy about it? Not, you know. Uh, losing, losing Java was not good, but the... Uh, our fleet action at Port Blair certainly was, so I don't know. Might call it a wash. Call it a wash plus. Oh, and we took out two other ships with subs this turn. Finally. Let's see what we get for reinforcements here. Okay, got a okay a squadron. That's good. Got a, another core in China. Wow. Yeah. Let's analyze this, man. 
What a turn. Well, guys, um, pretty happy with what happened this turn. Well, happy and not. Let's let's talk about it. Okay, we'll start with aircraft losses for this turn. One to zero. We lost one aircraft today. That was the B-17 that we saw near Sion got shot down by flak. That's all that's reported. For top pilots, that pilot of the B-17, unfortunately, was KIA. So I am curious if that's one of our B-17 aces, B-17 uh, pilots that have kills. Let me see here. Possibly. It, it may have been. Yeah. Maybe one of these guys, which is unfortunate. All right, looking at the pilot replacements, we'll take a look for wounded pilots this turn. Okay, just the same four that are showing that are coming back in the reserve. Again, Tanner B, still not getting better. We're hoping for the best, but a lot of these guys just may be lost forever is what it is. All right, so continuing on, uh, the Army lost points for this turn went up massively almost a thousand points because of our blowout in java his lost points on the other hand not that much higher i think we'll need to take a take a look at tracker at the end of this video just to kind of get an eye on the victory point situation for the turn but for now that's what we got so this is where the biggest movement was for us last turn the allied ship sunk versus japanese ship sunk let's look at this Last turn, IJ Navy got blown out. Look at this. So we had a, the Katori Maru was sunk by, um, obviously the Dutch sub. We saw it, we heard it sink. We know it sank. Uh, we know that all these AKLs here, were engaged and sunk by gunfire. So two sub, sub chasers, which are deadly to my subs, two of the three pointer patrol boats. You know, I like to kill these guys and about 10 AKLs. What we're not seeing on here is one of his ships that got hit by a mine and another one of our uh, ships that we sank with the silver sides with the torpedoes. So we actually sank even more than this. So, Vanicoro, unless no, 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 no. Yeah, we're missing two ships from this list, so we know uh, one hit a mine and one took a torpedo. So a great day for us finally at sea, where we do something useful. So we'll take a look at the overall score here: uh, fifteen thousand to ten four hundred. So he's about forty six hundred, forty seven hundred points in the lead right now. So he did gain on us quite a bit. Uh, apologize if I'm sniffling, guys. I'm still trying to get over this cold. All right. So let's take a brief look at the combat report, and we'll see here he is sweeping mines at Balak Poppin now, which I expected him to. It looks like the Kasui Maru hit a mine at Port Blair. That's probably what we heard. Uh, hit the mine early in the uh, beginning of the turn, and that's what subsequently sank. But we don't have proof of it, so we're just having to ha kind of listen to the sounds and, and know that's what's going on. Okay. Take a look at Sigit now. I'm going to scroll through this. All right, so he's got some stuff moving to Sir Bio on an AP. 10860 radio transmissions. Hmm. This Sigit looks old. February 23rd. This is old stuff. You know what? Looks like we had a little issue with an update here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video. Fix the SIGINT and the OPS report, and we'll come back to it. Wait, right here. Okay, let's try now. Hey, magic. I fixed it. So this happens sometimes when you're playing more than one uh, play-by-email on um, on one game install. I really should make two installs for each one, but uh, it just didn't update. But I know how to go into the archive, and it's just a text file that you copy and paste. No big deal. So let's take a look here. Okay, we got a unit located at Surabaya. 5th Division planning for an attack on Changsha. Well, come at me, bro. Uh, okay, 58th Regiment planning for attack on Sion. So we know he's got an infantry regiment in that big stack there. 
Another unit planning for attack on Chang Sha. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Fourth division located at Manila. So he's got a third of a division probably uh, doing garrison duty at Manila. Okay, nothing nothing crazy there. Let's look at the ops report. Let's see here. Okay, we've got a ship repair to Auckland. Another ship at Portland. Uh, as to the Portland of Colombo. Nice. All right. Scrolling through, mostly sighting reports here. A lot of sub activity near uh, Sydney. All right. Diego Garcia, fortification level three. Delhi, this airfield size five, that'll help. Cheng Shaw, this is really big. Uh, expands fortification, fortification to size two. And we'll talk about that in a minute, why that's important. Okay. Grading at Rangoon. Okay, Guam USN Naval, ba uh, USN Base Force takes replacements. It's good. Oh, all of these ships have been reported to have been sunk. Okay, we got another RAF squadron at Aden, and looks like something at Chongqing. So let's take a look at that real quick. So at Aden, we got another squadron. So these are good. Okay, Hurricane Trops, Hurricane One Trops, which are still okay. Uh, pilots look really nice. Good experience, decent air, decent defensive. These are good pilots. So this squadron will be a, a drag and drop uh, unit that we can get into action right away. So. We'll get these guys prepped to head out. But we'll get them training for now. So good. Another RAF Hurricane Squadron. You can never have enough of those. And then Chungking just got another... Um, right here. This is actually a really decent sized unit. Look at this. It's fully equipped. Well, it's it's got a lot of infantry anyway. 257 assault value. And how do we add that up? We take our... Maneuver sections like our infantry units, the rifle squads and the MMGs, 247 plus 17, 257. Cool. So that's a good unit. Now, obviously, it's not as big as it can be because that's the TOE that it can have. It can have up to 729 rifle squads. So if we leave it just kind of there to rest for a bit, I'll bet you this will start growing in size over time as we get re replacements available. So... Okay, well, let's just go ahead and start talking about the turn, and we'll start in China as we always do. So, again, he has not quite gotten into Sion yet, but he is any day about to. He's still indicating that he's moving into the Hex. We currently have 3,000 assault value in there, but I don't want any of them to stay. I want everything out. So, we're moving out. I'm going to start packing everything and moving it, but we're going to stay in combat mode in case he does actually attack. Because when he does come across, it's going to be a shock attack. And if we are not in the right op mode. Um, sorry about the sniffling. Uh, if we're not in the right op mode, we're going to take extra casualties. So it's very important that we have that dialed in. So we are going to move out of Sion, but doing it in a controlled way in combat mode. So if we do get attacked, we don't take as many losses. So uh, for those of you that watched my live stream last night, you know that I had planned a big old cap trap for... For Lodric at Changsha. This is what I had in there. Okay. But for whatever reason, not a single bomber attacked Changsha last turn. And I know that Lodric didn't know I was doing this because I make my moves off of the moves he's already put in. So it's too late for him to react, even if he did see the video. Nothing he can do. Now I do have a theory. I have heard from a, a veteran player that bomber pilots. Uh, they're squadron commanders that have low aggression. The game cheats and they kind of know that they're going to go into a base with a lot of fighters. They seem to know that before they should know and they just won't fly. So me moving 100 fighters into Changsha may have scared some of these AI squadron commanders into not wanting to go into Changsha to attack. 
So that sucks because I didn't get my aircraft kills. But what it did help is this. Uh, we just built up another fortification level, and that's huge. It's super critical right now that we start rebuilding Changsha and get it set up for another attack. So I already got more troops in there. As you can see, my AV is back up to 30, 30 almost 3650. And with these aircraft being in Changsha, they're acting as a deterrent for him to stop bombing Changsha, which will allow me to rebuild the fort and we can get strong there again. So even if we don't get the plane kills that I was hoping for, we have a fleet in being of aircraft, if you will, that's going to dissuade Lodric from wanting to come into Changsha and do battle. Now, if he wants to do battle, let's go because I've got great aircraft there and I've got more coming in. And this is going to be where we're going to have a battle. So if he wants... If he wants Chang Sha, he's going to have to send everything he's got at it now. Every fighter he's got has to go to Chang Sha. And you know what? I'm ready for it. So I think I'm going to leave him there for a few days and see what happens. But I'm not leaving him. We're not leaving until we get this fortification level built back up to something better. And it's just going to make it a big slog for him again. Because the forts is what's saving us. So even if we didn't get our big cap trap, we still have dissuaded his bomber pilots if what that guy is saying is true. From attacking Changsha, which means we rebuild the base. It's a win-win for me. I'm happy with it. Okay, so uh, Burma's quiet. Nothing new to report on the actual uh, terrain there. But we have a lot to talk about uh, in the Andaman Sea, the Bay of Bengal, and the naval engagement. So, uh, as I predicted, Lodric did go into Port Blair. And if you recall, about a week ago, we had Sigint that the second SNLF was going to be the unit that, that attacks... Port Blair. And sure enough, that's what went in there. Sigint doesn't lie. I had the Task Force Royal Sovereign with that ship in the lead standing and doing just escort duty in between Rangoon and Ramry Island in case he sent any surface units that way. But since I saw that he was going in there, I commanded the um, Task Force to head at full speed into Port Blair to engage. And engage they did. We had a complete blowout of Lodric's naval forces there. Let me find the battle report one more time so you can see it again. Here it is. We didn't take a single scratch. We completely and utterly decimated his invasion. I wish there was something more juicy in there. He used nothing but AKLs because I think he's scared to go into the bay with anything bigger. But it's still a blowout. All right. These are ships that he doesn't get back. Well... I guess he'll get some of them back later on, but uh, this just weakens him, and it gives us confidence. It gets our ship crew's experience, and it's so awesome to be able to use one of these R-class battleships offensively because they're really slow, and they don't have great range, but they have good armor, and they have great guns. So the Royal Sovereign reigns supreme today, and we completely decimated the entire invasion fleet. So something we need to look at here, though, is we have another task force sitting off the coast here just south of Rangoon uh, I'm wondering if this was some sort of complementary uh, attack force to go with this um, I do want to get these guys out and I'm going to use these guys to cover them so I did sortie two carrier tasks two carriers last night when I did my live stream uh, these guys are uh, Raymond Sperance is back in command because he's awesome we're going to head over and provide covering for this Port Blair task force to retreat. And then from there, we can head up and do escort duty for the convoys going in and out of the Bay of Bengal towards Rangoon. In the meantime, though, I am going to call these guys off because this is a threat now. So these guys are going to head back in, uh, probably go take shelter at Akyab. These guys are going to stay and not move one inch, and we will resolve this task force later on. We'll deal with it later on. I don't know where it's going. It's saying northeast, which is this direction, right? But I'm sure he could. he's trying to intend to interdict shipping going in and out of Rangoon. So that's the plan. We're going to get these guys back to Colombo to rearm, refuel, uh, refit, use the carriers to cover their retreat. And then we'll figure out what the next steps are out here. But I'll probably put together another R-Class battleship task force to do what this one did and continue running escort duty for my supplies going into Burma. So overall, another successful attack in the bay. 
Uh, we were probably going to lose Port Blair, but now these guys are going to have to deal with what I had to deal with with getting bombarded because now I'm going in there and I'm going to start bombarding this guy. So it, it's all good. Uh, the, we still got two units sitting on the rail lines here in Malaya. Nothing new to report there. Uh, nothing happening at Palembang. Unfortunately, we, as I previously discussed, uh, Java has now fallen. Completely gone. We have zero troops left on Java. Uh, again, I want to congratulate Lodrick for this. I think he executed this attack well. It was well supported, and he came in heavy, which is what you really should do. And I did not manage the defense well. I went towards Batavia earlier in the campaign to try to... I left the safety of Bandung to go to Batavia, and those guys got lost. And it weakened Bandung where we had the better terrain. So when it came time for him to take it, he took it out easily. I thought we would put up a much better fight than that, and we did not. So now Lodrick's got about 3,000 AV of troops on Java or more. And where is he going next? He's freed up all these forces for something else. Uh, Palembang shouldn't be hard to take at this point. Uh, maybe they'll go to Terracan to try to save these guys. Maybe he'll use them over here in Celebus. I don't really know, but a lot of troops are now freed up for Lodric to do something else. So it's it's bad for me that we lost um, Java, but it's, I'm actually kind of excited too because I want to know what he's going to do next. Um, I want some spice in this campaign. And this last turn was super spicy, and wherever these troops are going to go next should be spicy as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, looking over here in Dutch East Indies, what we have left. We did spot this. So we have what appears to be a, a escort carrier with something else. I don't trust that the TK, the tankers. But what we do know is he's got fighters in there. So we're not going after them because they've got cap. No idea where they're heading to. It says east, which could be anywhere. Could be another invasion force for all I know with just some fighter cover. Uh, again, we now have a blockade set up at Balak Papin to try to dissuade ships from coming in and out of there. He's got now 23 fighters on the field, so it will be difficult to bomb that. We do see here that it appears that the refinery did take some damage. The oil and the refinery centers were slightly damaged, but that's um, hardly going to be noticed by him. That's still plenty of output there, and we left quite a bit of oil. We had a pretty uneventful strafing run on these guys here at Terra can accomplish nothing. In the Philippines, he's continuing to finally grab bases here. Uh, he's finally working his way down here, which is what he really needs to be doing. He landed a force behind us at Butuan, which I think is interesting. It's not a big force. It looks like a SNLF unit, but we're, we're trapped now. We only have one direction to go, and that's, that's south. So these guys are heading towards Cagayan, and Cagayan looks like it's pretty well defended now. So we may want to not want to take this combat and just maybe detour around this way to get back into Malay Belay. I don't think he really knows what we've got in Malay Belay, because if he did, he'd attack it. We have nothing there. I don't know what he's doing, but my goal now is to just rescue these guys and get them back safely into the mountains here, and we'll figure out what to do after that. All right, so continuing on, uh, looking pretty quiet over here in Perth. We got about mm, a day and a half, a, a turn and a half till these guys make it into Perth with some more fuel. Okay, we do have that sub sitting off of uh, Sydney, and we're going to keep trying to attack it. But we did get two task forces into Sydney last turn, including this one, which I think is pretty important. The Allure Line. This ship was damaged over a month ago in Numea by a, a carrier attack. But we got it back to Sydney safely. So what we're going to do now is get it back onto the shipyard. I'm going to put it on low. Actually, no, I take that back. We'll leave it at pier side for now. And the pier side is going to work on anything that's not major damage, right? Because right now we already have ships in the shipyard and I don't really want to mess up their repair schedule so we'll leave the lure line here to get permanently repaired but once we have it up and running this is going to be a pretty decent troop ship to get back into action so I'm glad we were able to save this thing it took a bit but we got it back so we'll get this repaired and we'll get it back into the fight 
you'll notice that the ca the carriers that were here last turn are now gone. Where did they go? I have no idea. So we have an issue here because we apparently have a hole in our naval search such that we have uh yeah, we have carriers operating out here that we don't know where they went to. That's that's concerning to me. So I need to get my PBYs re uh reestablished because these carriers could be going anywhere. They could be all through here for all I know. They could be over here. They could be out this way. I don't really know where they went to. We don't have good eyes on them. Uh, the carriers that were at Luganville have pushed down to Tana now. And that is a bit of a concern because we know that this task force has at least two uh, Congo-class battleships in there. And that's a lot of firepower. Um, so but what he did do is leave Luganville undefended. And I do see some ships here. So I may want to try a port strike on Luganville next turn. But this also could be a bit of a cap trap in itself. He may be just moving down here thinking that we've cleared out of, we've cleared Luganville. So we're going to go after Luganville, in which case he'll move his carriers back into Luganville and trap our bombers. I know I'm trying to do some like reverse psychology, thinking ahead of the box 3D chess here. Uh, I, now that I just talked myself through this, I'm not going to send the bombers at Luganville because what he's going to do next turn is send these guys right back and he's going to cap trap us. So I'm not doing it. We'll give it a turn to see where these guys go. If they remain here, I'll think about it after that. But I got to play 3D chess with Lodric here because I think he's messing with me. Okay. But we do have a carrier task force missing. They are definitely missing and we need to find them and find them soon. All right. Looking up here, uh, this is the Dutch ship ship the k11 uh, commanded by commander provost excellent job my my good sir nice to get a kill under your belt they took out the uh that rather large ap somewhere in here all right the rest of the ships appear to have gotten away what we do have here is a few more task forces spotted near mabal these guys are here. Don't really know what they are. We have these guys moving northeast. These guys moving northeast. So these appear to be task forces that are moving away now. Probably out of Rabal. I think we need to start getting some more subs in this area. Because he appears to be uh, traversing this direction uh, between Truck and Rabal. So I think I'm going to start setting up more subs out here in this area. Because I think we're missing some kills here. And it's all deep water. Ocean Deep. So now that I've kind of established which direction that he's heading in with his his ships, it's time to start getting some submarines into the action here. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So that's basically our turn. Um, I, I'm really, really happy with what happened over here at Port Blair. That was really awesome. I'm glad I pulled that off. We still have some more adversity to get through with these guys. But I think we can get this task force out. If he doesn't have battleships in here, he's probably not going to be willing to go after this Royal Sovereign because the Royal Sovereign can eat anything's lunch short of another battleship. So, see how that goes. We lost Java, but, you know, it was bound to fall at some point. I just thought we could hold out longer, but... As always, I want to thank you guys for watching these videos. Thank you for supporting me and Lodric. Thank you for supporting my channel. We're over a thousand subscribers now. We're gaining every day. So I hope people are enjoying this content. And even if you're not normally a fan of these turn-based strategy games, you got to admit this is pretty awesome to watch and see this whole big thing happening here. Um, and I hope if you're new to the channel and you're just now discovering these videos, that you stick around for the ride because we got an entire war to fight here. And you know what? We're taking it to the Japanese, and we're going to keep pushing back as best we can. I'll catch you guys on the next one. You know what? I got ahead of myself. I told you guys that I was going to uh, show you the, the some tracker stuff here. So I just want to show you this real quick before I really end the video. Uh, so I forgot to capture the previous term, but if you can look down here, um, hopefully you can see this on your monitors. I don't know. It's it's pretty uh, pretty small, but as of turn 81, which is the 25th of February, which we're, we're now on, 
the score differential is 1.452 to 1. So Lodric has 1.45 times as many points as I do. So 15, 1, 2, 5, 10, 4, 19. So in order for Lodric to win an auto victory as of January 1st, 1943, he needs a 4 to 1 advantage. So he's very, very far away from that. And while he still has time, I, I guess I could technically really, really screw up a lot over and over again. But I would think at this point, the chance of him getting an auto victory is, is getting dimmer. But he did make up a lot of points. So, uh, yeah, in the last two turns, he gained 865 points on us. So what we do see here is that his ship sunk count went up significantly, though. So he's up to 80 now. The game is not reporting that many. Uh, there are still more ships. Uh, the tracker kind of lets you know that there's more than what meets the eye. We don't know exactly what we sank entirely yet, but there is more in there that we don't know about. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, we start getting some more intel as to what we've sunk over the past couple months. Anyway, I just want to show you the point differential, 1.452 to 1. And that's over here. I will catch you guys on the next one, for real this time.